help prevent more infections. Jack Parrick, CCTV, Brussels. Turning to Japanese politics now, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has announced he will dissolve Parliament on Friday and hold an early election in mid-December. He has also put off a sales tax hike planned for next year. These come after Japan released its preliminary GDP numbers for the third quarter, indicating the country's economy declined for two consecutive quarters. Terence Tarashima reports from Tokyo. Two years since his dramatic return with promise of economic recovery, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe admits a slight pause in his economic revitalization plan and announced a postponed second stage of his sales tax hike and called for a general election. We will dissolve the House of Representatives on Friday 21st this week as a referendum on postponing the consumption tax hike by 18 months. Postponing the additional 2% sales tax hike by 18 months was a sour decision for Abe, but he vowed that this would be the only pause he will take. Prime Minister Abe wanted to have something visible, that the economy is on steady recovery track despite the effects from a sales tax hike in April. The third quarter GDP figures were a tremendous blow to his administration. Abe firmly said he would stake his political career. If we cannot secure a clear majority, it would mean that Abenomics have lost the trust and I will then place my resignation. However, many Japanese were baffled on the need and timing for this snap election. Senior LDP lawmaker says this election is about public's evaluation on Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's performance so far, but experts sees it differently. This is the safest time to call for a snap election with minimum political damage ahead of a number of sensitive issues Abe needs to deal with next year. The most unpopular topic of nuclear restart, reinterpretation of the constitution, TPP and collective self-defense are still to be dealt with. What he's doing, I think, is a clear political calculation. I'll take my lumps now because I'll do worse later. And if I run now, I get a two-year extension, or at least the LDP gets two more years in control of the diet, more time to roll out his agenda of reform. Experts agree that it will be hard for the small opposition camps to form a formidable alliance to contend with the LDP at such a short notice. The question that lies in this election is how much public confidence Abe can retain, losing minimal seats to wipe the slate clean from the recent scandals. Terence Teoshima, CCTV, Tokyo. Iran and the P5 plus one group, namely the five permanent members of the UN Security Council plus Germany, are having talks in Vienna, striving to find a long-term solution for the decade-long dispute that disputed Iran's nuclear program. They're making last effort to bridge the gaps over some key issues, aiming to strike a comprehensive deal by the deadline of next Monday. For more on that earlier, we talked to our correspondent Sandra Gottman in Vienna. It's only day one of a marathon of talks being held this week here in Vienna between Iran and six world powers who are here to try and seek assurances from Tehran that it has peaceful intentions for its nuclear program. The West is willing to ease the current sanctions in place against Iran in return for Iran's agreement to cut down the number of centrifuges it has that are used to enrich uranium to dangerous levels. Now, the two sides still say there are huge hurdles to overcome. Both the U.S.'s Foreign Secretary John Kerry as well as Iran's Foreign Minister Javad Zarif say these talks are going to be very tough indeed. They've lasted for over a decade now and we're really in the 11th hour this week. But they do say there's still hope. What Iran also says, though, is that Western demands remain still too excessive and that uh, any chance of reaching a deal will hinge on whether the U.S. is able to reduce its demand for Iran to cut down the number of centrifuges it has in its possession and whether Iran can get the assurances it wants that Washington will eventually relax all sanctions against the country. Now, the incentives on both sides are quite great. Iran's economy has been battered by the oil embargo uh, in place 
And the U.S. and its allies still believe that Iran may have intentions in the future to build a nuclear weapon. So this agreement is all about striking a deal on Monday that will be a lasting and permanent agreement so that we can sweep this under the rug once and for all. Now, come Monday, if a, an agreement is uh, not reached in full, there is talk that perhaps an existing temporary agreement may be uh, extended for another few months or so. Under that agreement, uh, Iran enjoyed access to some of its oil proceeds and uh, in exchange it cut the number of uranium uh, centrifuges it has in its possession uh, to an acceptable number for the West. It was a test of trust on both sides. Uh, I don't think any side wants to see this fail, so we may expect some kind of agreement, as loose as it might be, on Monday by the deadline. In the Middle East, five Israelis have been killed and seven others wounded.